Hello. So you got the Tyrannus QX7 and you want to use your TBS Crossfire or you're looking at buying it and uh, yeah you want to make sure you can use that with that radio. Unfortunately currently the QX7 cannot use the Crossfire's protocol to its full capabilities um, at this moment in time that is anyway. There are software fixes but they won't unlock the Crossfire's full potential. The way around this is to replace the signal inverter within the radio itself. Uh, to do this you're going to void the transmitter's warranty. And this mod is not for the faint hearted. So if you're a novice at soldering I would seek help from somebody who does have the experience. The mod was also created or found by somebody called Nathaniel. I think it's Nathaniel A. Kermins. So uh, full credit for him uh, to bring this to us so we can get crossfire in the back of this radio. Okay, so these are what we're going to need for this. We're going to need some needle nose pliers, some um, scissors, wire cutters, four um, different coloured wire. Uh, these are like servo wires. I've got white, blue, black and red. You're also going to need to take the main board out of your radio. There's just four screws on the back, eight screws on the main board itself and all the connectors. Uh, you can see there the middle the middle connector, which will be the ribbon one, is not a clip up, it's a push away. So you push on either side of that black clip and it will release that ribbon cable. Uh, the captain tape and flux paste is just optional. I like to protect any surface mark components next to the one I'm removing, so you don't need to do that. Um, I will repeat again, this is uh, not an easy task, so if you're new to soldering or you've not done very much of it, uh, I'd pass this to somebody who does. So this is the uh, the, the signal inverter chip that we're going to put on there, basically remove the one that's there and we're going to solder to this one. Uh, this is from DigiKey, I'll put some links in. So this is looking at the chip from the underneath or the underside um, with the pins angled up towards us and you can look top left we've got ground, middle, output, bottom right, power, and these are the coloured wire that I'm going to solder to it. So we've got black to ground, obviously. Power's going to be red, output's going to be blue, and the input's going to be the white wire. So, yeah, just keep this picture handy. So, yeah, first of all, I'm going to tin the wire that we've got. I've stripped the ends of the wire about, I think it's about 1 mil, 1.5 millimetres. So I'm just going to tin each end. Get some nice solder on there, get a good bit on. Okay, so that's finished. Right, now we've got the main board. You can see the chip there at the bottom, sort of just off to the left of the middle of your screen. That black chip there is the one we're going to be removing. So I'm going to be putting some flux paste around that chip just to help with the conductivity uh, and removing that chip. So there's just three points on there, basically. You can do this with soldering iron. I have a reflow station or rework station, so it's just easy for me to use this. So I'm just going to heat that up until I can just see the flux paste sort of gather around the middle of that chip. And I'm just going to remove it, and there you go. You can see it in the bottom of the screen there. So I'm just going to re-tin re them solder points. But it's just the, the one on the right-hand side that needs doing. Um, let's just get a bit of solder on there and get a nice fine nib on your solder iron. Okay, so now I'm just going to cut down the uh, core on that wire. It's a bit long for that pad. So just snip that off, make sure it's out of the way of that board. We don't want any strands of wire around any components or anything like that. Okay, so get your core, the wire pre tin touching the pad and just apply a bit of heat. And just re arranging it. So I'm going to loop it up around the board to the front. So Put a bit of, bit of an angle on it, give it a little wiggle, make sure it's on there. And then I'm going to 
move some of this captain tape out of the way. If you are using a reflow, wait until it's uh, cooled down properly. You don't want to be pulling any of them components off. Okay, so let's get this wire bent over the board at the bottom there and loop it over. I'm just going to put some captain tape on there just to hold that down. Now we're going to trim it down. You, you can't really see, but just in front of that captain tape, there's three pins. We're going to be using one of them. So if you're using any tape to hold it down, make sure you can just see them now. Sorry. And three pins on this version of the board that I've got here. It, the, it's the SPT um, pin. On other ones, I have seen there's a difference on them. Some have them pins soldered into that, so you can solder it to the pin itself. But on the board I've got here, you can see the S.PT is the centre pad. And this is what it looks like on the other radio. You can see there at the bottom, it's with the red circle around, it's on the left. It says S.PT, that's the pin we want to be soldering to. Okay, so I'm going to use the blue wire. And apply it to that solder pad. Right, now we're going to, there's a capacitor, uh, you can just see it now where I am, on the right hand side or the closest side to the SD port, uh, SD card holder is the ground and the opposite side of that capacitor is the power which is going to supply 3.3 volts to the inverter chip and you can see as well on that on the larger chip that's just above the blue wire, that is the signal inverter itself. I've got that um, double side stuck down to that chip. So I've put a bit on the face of the chip, the top of the chip, so the pins are angled upwards. And then I've stuck it down there just to make it a bit easier to solder to. And that's where it's going to stay. So I've got the two pins on the right and the three pins on the left. And that is looking from the bottom, looking up through the chip. And there's the diagram again, you can see there on that board it's labelled GND on the left and power was on the right. So we've tinned either side of the capacitor. I'm just going to snip that wire down again because it was a bit long. And this is the black wire, so we're going to be soldering to the ground side of the capacitor. Checking that I haven't made any contact with any of the other components or pads. No. No, we're going to be soldering the red wire. I'm just going to trim that down again because it's too long. Make sure that the you're going to get no strands of wire over that board again. So pull it away, cut, never cut over the year. Um, circuit boards okay, let's get solder that to the power side of that capacitor bring that up for a bit of a close shot and you can just see the pad there where i've soldered to move the old inverter out of the way Okay, so now we're going to start soldering to the replacement uh, signal inverter. And I'm just looping that red wire around and it's going to go uh, just so that I can keep it out of the way of anything that might come in into play with it when it's back in the radio itself. I trim that down to size and then I'm going to strip some of that sheafing off uh, about 
one about one millimeter make sure you get good hold on that wire so that you don't pull it off the where we just soldered it um, and you can see there I always allow a bit more of the bare wire to show then I'll pre-tin it and then I'll trim it down to the size I want afterwards Okay, so I'm going to trim that um, wire down a bit now, so it's not too long. And now I'm going to start soldering. So, as you can see from the diagram again, we've got the red power. So that's the first pin I'm going to solder to, so I'm just going to pre-tin them. Um, on the right hand side as you're looking at it there which I'm going to grab that red wire and just loop it round As you can see, it's pretty fiddly, and these pins on the signal inverter are very small. There we go. I'm just deciding which wire to do next. <laughs> Right, so uh, yeah, so we're going to go for this black one now. <clears throat> Just trim that down, try and keep it out of the way of the motherboard or the PCB. And again, while stripping the sheathing off the wire. Okay, so you can see there it's the um, top left, which is the ground. I'm just going to print in that wire and then I'm going to print in the pins sorry for the head in the shot there I'm going to print in them pins on that side very carefully it was a bit awkward because the solder I had I didn't have any of my small stuff left and that solder is about twice the size of the pins so it was a bit awkward to get the solder on there So, yeah, that on the as you're looking at it there, it's actually the top pin. And that's the ground. So we've got the power on the ground sorted. Now we've just got the input and the output. I'm just measuring the distance there again, where to cut the wire. Just trim that back. Take the sheathing off. About one millimeter again. And pre-tin that wire. The soldering iron a bit of a clean. I'm going to go ahead and solder that to the pin there as well, which is on the middle. I'll give us a camera now. <laughs> yeah, middle pin on the three pin side.
Yes, and I'm going to trim down the white wire, which is going to be the input, which is on the two pin side which is the only remaining pin left now, as you can see there. Okay, let's offer it up. Bend it around again. Should trim that down because it was a bit long. And now we're going to solder it to the two pin side, which is next to the power. And there we go. <coughs> so you can see that. <coughs> the uh, finished soldering so just a bit more of a close-up shot there so you can just see we've got the uh, how we've got them soldered up you can see the blue ones in the middle there and the blacks just above it that's very small pins so we're going to get the radio back together now <coughs> and uh, we're going to push up this black connector which is where that middle ribbon sits i'm just going to use something push either side with the needle nose pliers just push that out and then we're going to push feed that um, feed the ribbon in there it's a bit awkward it's not very long as that ribbon <coughs> sorry I apologize for my throat yeah so we'll feed that in and then push that black clip down Okay, then we're going to sit that back in. There's the pins on the underside. Uh, sorry, pins. Um, line it up with the screw holes. <clears throat> Get that pushed in. So it's seated where it's going to finish. I'm just making sure all the wires are out of the way before I get it screwed down. And also the vibrator on the right hand side there. Just make sure that's sat in its little socket there, the location hole. Okay, so we're going to pop these screws back in now. And then we're going to put all the connectors back in. Yeah, put the back back on, just line them pins that go through your module bay uh, that are a bit tight, so just be careful, don't just force it on. And then we're going to tighten them four screws back up. And we'll replace the battery, the battery cover, and the welly knob, and that's it, done. Thanks for watching. Next video will be wiring up the receiver to the DYSF4 and also doing all the software on the radio. Links are in the description below. Thank you.